Yeah, don't even bother. Yeah, don't even The platypus within the state of Queensland is unfortunately still in the conservation status of least concern. However, under the IUCN, which is the International Union for Conservation of Nature, on the red list, they have been upgraded to near threatened. So to us, it's a real concern. And they're a species that is so elusive and we may not even know that they're disappearing right under our noses because a lot of people don't see them and they're not recording them. To me, it's quite scary and we need to get as much information as possible out there. My project is broadly about platypus populations within southeast Queensland and identifying not only where they are, but what is impacting them and influencing them within the region. So we're taking observational surveys, environmental DNA, water sampling data, as well as capture uh, data to determine what is specifically influencing platypus within these environments. Environmental DNA or eDNA is a method that we can use to detect uh, the DNA of any species within their environment. And so for the platypus, because they poo in the water, they're swimming around in the area, they're shedding their hair cells and skin cells, we're lucky enough to be able to pick that up in the water. So we can take a water sample and filter it through a very tiny 0.22 micron filter it's the equivalent of the life straw, which is the straw that you can suck up from a dirty pool and it takes out pathogens and bacteria. And we pass water through that, which will then be able to pick up the fragments, the tiny fragments of DNA that platypus are shedding within the water. And so then we can send that to the lab. They can analyze it for the presence or absence of platypus within the waterway. My day starts in the afternoon where I head out to my sites along a waterway which will be at least four to six sites within uh, the afternoon to set up and I'm using a type of trap called a fike net. So we're anchoring the fike nets to the banks, um, the nets that I'm using to capture the platypus and they have two wings um, out either side and we set one up facing downstream and one facing upstream and hopefully the platypus will come and swim along, hit the wings and get funneled into the windsock part yeah, of wild. the fike net. And fingers crossed we get some. And so once the nets are in, we do one final check uh, to make sure that they're they're secured uh, before the sun goes down, make sure that there's no turtles or any other species within those nets just in case. And then once night falls, we'll be checking the nets at least every two to four hours throughout the, the night to see if we've caught any platypuses and to also release any of the bycatch. A lot of these places that I have been trapping within the urban Brisbane region are quite small populations, so it is very low densities and we could be putting out nets and going out throughout the night and we won't be capturing any platypuses. So it is a laborious task for not much reward, but it's certainly something that needs to be done in terms of being able to get that detailed genetic analysis and uh, sex ratio and determining numbers within a, a population or within a catchment population. When we do excitingly capture a platypus, uh, I take it out of the net by its tail uh, because the males do have a venomous spur on their both of their hind ankles and so you don't want to get spurred. So they need to be caught and pulled out from the net by the, their tail. And then they're put placed into a, a calico bag which has a little opening out of one of the corners so it can have its bill come out uh, with its little nostrils if it needs to, um, to feel secure and breathe through its nostrils. Then we 
place the platypus on a comfy foam pad and I will measure it and I will weigh it. I will take a small tissue sample from their hind foot webbing for my genetic analysis. I will obviously sex it from their spur. That's the only way we can determine if it's male or female. The male's spur does have different stages of growth. So we can gauge the age roughly of, plat of male platypuses. And then we look for any signs of entanglement. Being in an urban environment, obviously litter is a big issue. So rubber bands, hair ties, your fishing line or anything like that, we're looking for any signs of that to make sure that we can cut it off if need be. And to also let uh, authorities know that it is an issue as well. To release a platypus is quite special because you know you've just had that 15-20 minutes of processing and they disappear quite fast. They're just happy to go swimming off into the water. The main threats to platypuses are anything that impacts water because they heavily depend on water to survive. They feed within the water, they mate within the water and they can move safely within the water. And so the frequent drought uh, and severity of drought that we're going to see with climate change, irrigation from agricultural areas or even urban use and within an urban environment how we're changing that landscape and it's being modified because of uh, urban development is going to impact the resources that they need. One problem for platypuses is any ringed rubbish. So hair ties, rubber bands, the rings around jars, because if they end up in the waterways and the way platypus forage through their, the rocks and the substrate, they can slip over their head. It can impact their foraging ability and therefore getting food for them uh, during the day it can lacerate under their arms, which is really difficult. If you are fishing, fish responsibly, take any of the fishing line away with you. Use wildlife friendly yabby traps, not opera house nets, because they are a death trap for our aquatic wildlife. Another issue can be when dogs are around waterways, especially on dawn and dusk when platypus are more active. And if dogs are off lead and they go into the water, they can disturb platypuses and again, their foraging time. So people should be mindful of having their dogs off lead during those times. And also if their dog is swimming in the waterways, again, you, if it is a male platypus, you certainly don't want your dog to be spurred by a male platypus. You don't want that vet bill. Hey, gorgeous. The end goal for my research is to provide the data to influence policy to make the on-ground changes that we need to specifically protect platypus within South East Queensland. We don't have this detailed population data. It's something that we very much lack within the region. And for any on-ground uh, influence with stakeholders from council to local groups to land managers, we need to make sure that we can have that policy in place and that information that feeds into those policies is, is something that we really need from this research. I have just finished two and a half years of field work and now I'm in my data analysis and writing stages. So the data analysis has been our observational surveys, our environmental DNA data and then the genetic sampling uh, of the tissue will get sent off to the lab for sequencing and then we will start to do a landscape genetic analysis with that as well for final submission at the end of the year. The platypus is iconic and it is specific to Australia and the more we can protect this species and improve their conservation, we're protecting the freshwater ecosystems and the waterways in which they live, which we depend on as humans as well.